and War Eagle, I have to say, is so exciting that um, this is the first time ever Auburn's made it into final into the final four and in, in, in the NCAA um, championship. So we're really excited. We listened to the game on the way home from Atlanta tonight, and it was finishing up um, as we were getting into Birmingham. And of course, we sat in the car the last couple of minutes just to, as um, Auburn was getting in those last few points. It was a tight game, but very exciting. So. Um, it's always close, I feel like, with Auburn, but we're so excited to, to have made it. Um, anyway, so we were out of town. Hey, Lainey, I'm making the cheesy tortellini tonight. So I, I sent you the recipe, but you'll definitely have to make it since I'm doing the video too. So no excuse, you'll know how to do it, and I can't wait to hear how it turns out. So this is a very forgiving recipe. But anyway, we were um, out um, at a conference for my husband this weekend in Arizona. We got to see um, a lot of old friends, which was really fun that we don't get to see, um, but for a few times a year. Um, he learned a lot, and we met some new friends as well. So um, James had a blast with his grandparents, and now we're back home trying to settle in for the week ahead. And pasta is, I feel like, a relatively simple dinner to throw together, um, a familiar recipe that's one of our favorites. So I'm excited to share this with y'all tonight. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Um, unfortunately, we might be making the trip to Mobile this weekend. We'll, we'll keep you updated, Michelle. Um, but um, so um, most of y'all don't know, but um, one of um, basically a, co a close family friend that's like one, one of our aunts, um, has had cancer for several years and we were planning to go visit this weekend, but she's taken a turn for the worse. So we, it might, we might not make it. It might be, um, so just keep us, um, in the family and in your prayers, um, and your thoughts and prayers that will be appreciated. I know it's going to probably be in next, um, if, if things don't take a turn for the worse this week, it'll probably be within the next couple weeks. But, um, anyway, um. Uh, let's get back to the recipe at hand tonight. Okay, so over here I have our cheesy tortellini. So I just got refrigerated tortellini from the grocery store. We dropped, we stopped by Trader Joe's on the way home, but I get Butani pasta a lot too. So you just go to the refrigerated section. Um, this cooks really easily because it's refrigerated and not dried. It's super quick. So I got two packages of cheese tortellini. These were 10 ounces a piece, and I decided to cook all of it. So the recipe calls for 16 ounces. Um, with the Bhutani pasta, you can get a bigger family size package as opposed to the smaller packages for two to three people. Um, and those, I think, are about a pound. So if you get a big package, you're good to go. If, um, more than likely, if you get the small package, you might want to do one and a half or two packages. But you can kind of fudge the ingredients to make it work for you. So I just went ahead and cooked all the pasta so we wouldn't have any just sitting in the fridge. All right, and I just boiled um, some salted water, added a dash of olive oil to help keep it from sticking, um, and check the package directions in case it's different based on the brand you try, but usually um, five to seven minutes, sometimes less, just depending on the type of pasta, but five to seven minutes, boil it, um, and then just drain it, you're good to go. If you slightly undercook the pasta, no worries, it's going into the oven, so you, um, it'll be good either way, even if you cook it slightly less than what you want it to be. So very forgiving recipe. So, so this is over here. We have our drained pasta that I cooked for about seven minutes and then drained, cooked it in salted water. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and fix James's meal up before I touch all the cheese um, to prevent cross-contamination. Um, so he can't have cheesy pasta. So even if I didn't put cheese on top or in the sauce or anything, he can't have the tortellini. So he loves pepperoni and chicken. So I'm in a little gratin dish. I sprayed it with olive oil. I put some pepperoni in there and some chicken. And oh, let me grab some of our marinara sauce here. So I just grabbed some Italian marinara sauce. Um, I try to look for marinara or tomato and basil sauce when I'm at the store. Either one of them I'll usually get to keep on hand. I try to look for ones that are sugar-free and soy-free. Um, sugar-free because you really don't need the extra sugar. Um, you get lots, plenty of flavor and sweetness without it. Um, and it's still just a little bit healthier. And then we avoid things like soy and stuff because James has a little bit of a soy sensitivity. Okay, so I pour just a little bit of tomato sauce in there. This is just a basic marinara sauce with a dash of red wine in it. 
This is a Trader Joe's brand, but um, I get Newman's own a lot. Newman's Organic, they have a, a really good selection at reasonable prices. Okay, and I'm going to add another layer of pepperoni on top. James really likes pepperoni. He would even eat it raw, which he did for lunch on Wednesday. He didn't want to eat whatever I'd fixed him for lunch, and he went to the fr fridge and was like, he pulled out the pepperoni and was, and was saying cheese. He wanted the cheese, but we were all out of vegan cheese, and so he just got pepperoni and fruit and stuff for, for lunch. I forget what else he had, but he does like pepperoni. And we are about out of this. I'm just going to give him a bunch of it. Okay. So he'll have kind of a baked Italian dish without pasta tonight. All right, and then over the top, I'm going to sprinkle some dairy-free mozzarella shreds, vegan mozzarella. And this mozzarella is also soy-free since he has that soy sensitivity. All right, so he'll be excited. Put vegan cheese on just about anything and he'll devour it. He really loves vegan pizza. All right. And his is just about set. All right, I think that will be good for him. That's a good hearty dinner. He might eat all of it or he might would save the leftovers and we can give him a little bit of a veggie like green beans or maybe some fruit to go with it. All right, so for us, we are going to add two cups of marinara sauce to our pot. Sometimes I'll use a separate bowl to mix it up, but I find that it's just as easy to use um, the pot that you've cooked the pasta in, and then you don't have to wash as many pots or, or bowls. However, if you use an enameled pot like this, instead of using a stainless steel whisk, um, use um, a rubber or silicone whisk like I have. If you use just a regular mixing bowl, a uh, wire whisk is fine. All right, so we've added two cups of marinara sauce. I'm also going to add a third cup of uh, mascarpone cheese, so just regular mascarpone cheese. Oops. And it's about, it's pretty much a heaping um, third of a cup. Since I did um, 20 ounces of pasta instead of 16 ounces, I made the cup a little bit heaping to add a little bit more to it. And I'm probably going to go in and add a little bit more marinara too. All right. This is pretty thick and sticks. I'm just kind of scraping that off the spoon. All right. All right, so I'd measured out the two cups, and then, of course, I poured some marinara sauce out for, for James's meal that's dairy-free. Um, but you see, there's not much marinara sauce left in the jar. So if you use two small packages of pasta instead of one big package that's more likely to be closer to, to one pound instead of a little bit over, I would just use the whole jar of marinara sauce if you're using 20 ounces of pasta. And you don't even have to measure it. It's just super easy. All right, I think I've got most of that out of there. But I wanted to make sure we reserved some for James and didn't run out. I also have um, one teaspoon of dried thyme. And I have one teaspoon of basil. So um, for the original recipe, it just called for thyme and parsley. But I decided to add a little basil as well because I love basil in Italian um, dishes. So a little bit um, doesn't hurt. It just gives a little bit of flavor kit. So... I have two tablespoons of um, dried parsley. Um, this is dried parsley that I actually made myself. I had some fresh parsley I used for a recipe a while back. Ended up drying it out and keeping it in the fridge and just crumbling up. So, this, um, But if you just buy pre-made par um, dried parsley at the store, that works fine too. If you use fresh parsley, then I would use four tablespoons of, of fresh parsley, but two tablespoons of dried. But I find it's usually a lot easier to just work with dried herbs than keeping fresh on hand. A lot of times during the summer, I'll try to keep dried basil on hand pretty frequently. But um, other than that, it's a lot of work. It's easier to keep dried on hand, especially in the winter. 
I also have some cream fraiche. I'm gonna go rogue on the recipe and add a little bit of cream fraiche, um, especially since I didn't use the whole can of marinara sauce. Um, since we added a little bit of extra pasta, I did give some to James. So I wanna make sure I have enough moisture in there. So I'm just going to use a tablespoon or two of cream fraiche just to add a little bit of richness and moisture. So this is completely optional. Just a little twist I'm doing on my original recipe. Alrighty. There we go. All right, and so I'm gonna grab our whisk and whisk this up. And I would recommend wearing an apron if you have one because you never know um, when tomato sauce is going to fly up and get you. But using a deep pot like this helps prevent some mess. We're getting a nice, pretty color. Kind of a light red, deep orange from the mascarpone cheese and the cream fraiche that are lightening up the tomato sauce and make it nice and creamy. And you can see all those pretty herbs in there. Awesome. Something else I've done before, instead of using the uh, mascarpone cheese, if I don't have that on hand, I might add some half and half or cream to the tomato sauce um, to add a little bit creaminess to it instead of the cheese. Or if I um, just want the pure tomato flavor, just use the tomato on its own. So this is you know, a very forgiving recipe. And if you don't have thyme or basil on hand, you could add a little bit of rosemary or a little bit of oregano. So um, a lot of Italian herbs would go well with this dish. All right. the side. All right, so now I'm going to just pop in our pasta. There we go. Ooh, okay. Go on tortellini went rogue. And I'm going to stir this together with a spoon. Now that the pasta's in there, that'll be easier than a whisk. Just stir to coat. really yummy. Okay, and there's a couple ways you can go from here as far as um, containers to put it in in the oven. So you can just go with like a eight by eight um, baking dish, or in this case, I decided to pull out um, an oval baking dish that's going that's about the same size as an eight by eight square dish would be. Or you can choose to do individual gratin dishes like I did for James over here. So sometimes we'll do that to make it, you know, look nice and plate really pretty. And that's, you know, something fun to do for having a dinner party too. And um, putting it in these little dishes also makes it really easy once you put, you can put the, um, the gratin dish um, on a dinner plate and then it's completely separate like if you want to put a salad or a vegetable on your plate as well you don't have to worry about everything running together but just to make it easy tonight I'm just going to put this all in one dish and I'm going to spray it with some olive oil like I did for James so it won't stick as much so just spray with a little bit of olive oil all right and then I'm just going to Put all of our yummy cheesy tortellini goodness in here. See all those pretty herbs? And the sauce is gorgeous too. The, the creamy red just really plays off those green herbs. So we'll have plenty tonight and then we can probably get some leftovers out of this tomorrow too, which means we won't have to cook tomorrow night. So that'll be nice. Right, almost there. Yeah, 
this is just about the right size dish for this. tends to be coming home for vacation I usually want one or one of two things um, chick-fil-a or really any kind of fried chicken um, it's the south after all and pasta is another one unless we've been somewhere that has a lot of pasta like Italy after I went with my grandparents to Italy um, definitely the first thing I wanted and ate several times of after eating that within a few days was chick-fil-a um, we ate a lot of yummy food in Arizona, but it was a little bit different from what we're used to. So we didn't have any pasta while we were out there and no fried chicken either. So having a nice comforting pasta dish is, is comforting when we get home. All right, yum, yum, yum. That's looking delicious. Okay, so now we're going to top it with some cheese before we bake it in the oven. And again, very forgiving recipe. You can go a lot of ways with this depending on what you have in, in your fridge. So, Original recipe calls for sprinkling with Parmesan and then topping with slices of mozzarella. Sometimes I'll sprinkle with Parmesan, sometimes I'll sprinkle with mozzarella or with um, a five cheese Italian or six cheese Italian and then sometimes I'll use provolone slices, um, sometimes I'll use mozzarella slices. It just kind of depends on what I have on hand. Today I actually don't have any sliced cheese on hand. I didn't realize we were out so I'm actually going to top with some sliced mozzarella. Sorry, with some shredded mozzarella, sorry. Do some shredded mozzarella first. This will be nice and bubbly when it comes out of the oven. So you can kind of think of this as a really easy and quick um, to put together um, something different from lasagna, but still really nice and cheesy and hot and all that. Of course, it's meatless. This is a good vegetarian dish. All right, I'm just going to shake the rest out. We didn't have a whole lot of mozzarella left. All right, so that's some shredded mozzarella there. And do a little bit of shredded Parmesan on top of there. So we have a little bit of a mixture of shredded cheeses. And you can use more or less cheese on top depending on what your preference too. So again, very flexible. All right, so a little bit of shredded Parmesan on top and then I'm actually going to top with a little bit of I was trying to remember if this, um, this is Italian blend cheese. This one has Parmesan, Asiago, and Romana. I couldn't remember if it was a che three cheese blend or a four cheese blend, but we have a little bit of Parmesan, um, Asiago, and Romano on top. This is a little bit chunkier too, so that'll provide some different texture. So whether you have sliced cheese on hand or shredded cheese or grated or whatever, um, very um, interchangeable, um, so that you can really work with to your um, tastes and everything, and what's convenient for you. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to pop this in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes. It'll be nice and heated through and all the cheese will be bubbly on top. And then we'll be all set to go. We can have a nice salad with this. And I'm also going to pop in James's dairy-free non-pasta Italian bake <laughs> with the pepperoni and the grilled chicken in it. All right, I'm gonna set our timer for 20 minutes. All right, 
So that's all set. I'll take pictures of it as it comes out of the oven and show y'all the finished product. But this is really, um, like I said, it's a very family friendly recipe. Kids love it. <laughs> it's a comfort food for me and my husband as well. And really not too hard to put together at the end of a long day. So just get um, the refrigerated pasta as a nice um, quick shortcut. It usually cooks in about five minutes or so. And then you just have to throw some pasta sauce on it, some herbs if you want, and sprinkle a cheese. So uh, very doable. I feel like for pretty much everyone. If y'all have any questions, just let me know. Y'all take care and enjoy the rest of your evening.